Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the real solar system in Kerbal Space Program. Yes, today I'm going to try to play the realism overhaul and real solar system mods. So I have installed a bunch of mods and everything is really cool. All of the main planets of the solar system are in here and even some of the moons and even some dwarf planets as well. It was quite an interesting experience but it was also very fun. My main goal for today is to get something into low earth orbit. And we are now starting construction of that probe. So right here we have a procedural probe core, which we can customize. And I found this one, it looks pretty cool. And there are a bunch of new parts and I had no idea what does what. I wanted to add a fairing here, but I, I found this, this payload adapter as well. It's all very, very new for me. Like I said, right here, I had never played RSS before. Now this footage is from actually a couple of months ago. I wanted to make a video on it, but but it never really made it into the big picture but today it will right here i found a, a new procedural tank and we can customize that as well and then i started looking for the engines and wow there are a lot of engines like probably 100 maybe even more so right here i found out what an inset an inset was it's basically just the the bottom of a fuel tank and i found this one which looked quite cool and then i was looking for an an engine a vacuum optimized engine and i found these aj10 engines but they have the correct size but the thrust is way too low for what i am trying to lift now the the experienced rss players among you will probably really cringe watching this video because you you probably be saying like oh my god no you should have just used that engine for that and this and you name it but a lot of engines were either too big too small or they had too low thrust so yeah i was checking to see how big the the f1 engines actually were i knew that they would be way too big for this rocket but it was just to see how big would they be and absolutely massive like pretty much as big as this entire rocket that we have so far so I was looking for a bunch of engines, I even found out that you could use procedural SRBs. Like, the customization in this game, in RSS, is pretty much unlimited, it's so cool. So yeah, a bunch of engines, and eventually, I'm pretty sure that's right about here, I found this one, the LE5 engine. It fits very nicely, and I even figured out that you could use multiple engine configurations. Now this engine, I'm pretty sure, runs on Hydrolox, because in the fuel tank, it has liquid hydrogen and oxygen, so yeah, Hydrolox. So we finally had a good engine, and now I was trying to figure out how to use decouplers, and it didn't work as traditional KSP, and eventually I found this interstage adapter, which is also customizable, because why not, and this one eventually made me know how you could use decouplers. I'm pretty sure this is actually not the real way that decouplers work in RSS, but for me it worked, so I'm I'm not complaining. So we are now done with the third stage. This is going to be a three stage rocket. And now we are going to start construction on the second stage. And I immediately found an engine that I thought to be good. But eventually you will see later that we will replace it with another one. And then we can now start construction of the first stage which we are doing right now and the first stage was pretty long of course we need quite a bit of fuel i think it's like 9000 meters per second of delta v just to get into low earth orbit so that's quite a lot and i was looking for a bunch of engines and i found this one the lr129 and this one also had a bunch of configurations we could extend the nozzle which i did because it looks cool. I'm pretty sure it didn't even change anything. And right here we are te doing the first test flight for our rocket. This is not going into orbit but just trying to see does it fly properly, can we separate stages and sadly no we could not. The second stage engine didn't ignite and I found out later why. So I went back to the VAB and I tried switching the second stage engine with another one. First of all looking at a bunch of other configs but yeah they didn't really seem to to change anything i believe it was because it said ignition's remaining ground support clamp so it can only ignite once and that is when it is in the launch clamps so i tried looking for another engine i found a bunch of engines but i even i even tried the raptors but they all didn't really seem to fit that well so then i eventually found 
an engine right here, the RD57, which seemed to fit this stage quite well and it also had enough thrust and ISP. So there we go, we now have a new second stage engine. And of course, every launch comes with trial and error, so this is definitely not our last launch. So right here, another quick test. This time the second stage engine did ignite and so did the third stage engine. So I thought right here that it was ready to launch. So I, I found these umbilical towers and first I just thought they worked as normal launch clamps that we are used to in case B. But of course, umbilical towers, they, they fill fuel. So what I did right here is make a, a kind of umbilical tower. So there we go. I'm pretty sure that's not actually how they're supposed to work, but it looks cool and that is what counts, I guess. So we are getting ready for our first real orbital test flight and we have lift off. Thrust to weight ratio is incredibly high and for some reason it didn't really throttle down all too well. As you can see, the rocket is very unstable, so in the later launches we'll be using the Smart ASS from MechJab. Everything was nominal so far, until we had to separate stages. It said vapor in feed lines shut down. What does this mean? Why did this happen? And how can I fix it? So, I did some research and I found out that there's something called ullage and also that if you stop firing your engine, your rocket slows down because of aerodynamical forces, drag, and your rocket slows down, the fuel in the tanks become weightless so they go up and then the pump which pumps fuel into the engine, it, it can't reach the fuel because it's just freely floating around there. So what I did was I added ullage motors so that you, when you stage separate your rocket still gets propelled upwards so that the fuel stays at the bottom of your tank so it can still be pumped into your engine. So we are doing another launch, we are doing a gravity turn and everything is nominal and luckily this time we were able to se stage separate normally. So there we go, you can see those ullage motors firing and we have ignition for our second stage, very very nice. That's already one step up from the Terran one. So our flight path is still nominal, everything is going right and I also added those ullage motors on the third stage which you will see right now. There we go and we have ignition for the third stage engine and we are continuing our way into orbit but sadly spoiler alert we can reach orbit we ran out of fuel be before we could reach orbital velocity and that was kind of a shame but we got we did get pretty far you will see how far in just a second so here we go we are making a maneuver node at our earth apoapsis and we will be executing our maneuver node in just a second so that we can almost reach orbital velocity around the earth you can see all of the beautiful planets there when i hold alt and move Move around with the mouse button with the more distant objects enhancement but we are almost running out of fuel there we go we have separated our payload from our rocket which for some reason went really slow and we reached an apoapsis of 201 kilometers and a periapsis of minus 26 kilometers so that is sadly going to end up re-entering the atmosphere of earth and sadly it will be burning up so kind of a shame but hey like Yoda once said the greatest teacher failure is very nice. So what I'm doing right here, I'm adding some monopropellant and I chose the fuel caviar B, which has, I believe, the highest thrust to ice B ratio, but I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on that. But we are on the launch pad once again, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to be our second to last launch of the video. Spoiler alert, our next launch will be the launch to reach orbit. So our vehicle is pitching down range, with which is very high class for we are starting our gravity turn. And our gravity turn has to be a lot steeper on Earth than on Kerbin because Earth is like 10 times bigger than Kerbin. So we are going to be separating our stage. There we go. And we are now on our second stage engine, the RD57, if I recall that correctly. Space starts at 140 kilometers in RSS, I'm pretty sure. At Kerbin, it starts at 70 kilometers. So the difference is quite quite a lot. I think that would actually imply that Kerbin has a pretty thick atmosphere. So we have separated our second stage, we're now on the third stage, and in a second we will cut off our engine. There we go, we have an apoapsis of 200 kilometers. What I'm doing right now, I'm, I, I think 
One of the ways that we can stop ullage, like the, the fuel floating up the fuel tank because of no gravity, is by spinning. I'm just afraid that we did the wrong kind of spinning because it didn't really seem to work all too well. But uh, please leave that in the comments if, if that is correct or not. But yeah, we did make it into orbit and we are now entering the atmosphere of Earth and we will definitely be exploding because as you can see, everything is overheating our reaction wheels have exploded reaction wheels that didn't really work by the way and our probe has completely been exploded so rest in peace probe and this is the final launch of the video so in the previous launches we ran out of fuel but for this launch i extended all of the fuel tanks by a couple of meters and now we should have enough fuel to reach orbital velocity so once again you need i think 9400 meters per second of delta v just to reach orbital velocity but this one has enough to do so. So our vehicle is pitching down range once again. The the flight trajectories for realism overhaul and RSS are pretty difficult in my opinion to, to be consistent, but I think for this launch I pretty much nailed it, so I'm I'm very happy with how everything turned out for this mission. So we are on our second stage now. The engine plume kind of looks weird, it looks like it's coming out of the fuel tank instead of the engine, but now it's fixed, so yeah, I don't really know what that was about. Every once in a while, I'm clicking that minus button at the pitch you can see at the smart ASS screen, and that is to fly flatter, and I want to fly flatter in order to raise not only our apoapsis, but also our periapsis, so that our circularization burn will be a lot cheaper. And the third stage engine, of course, has a lower thrust to weight ratio, so we have to pitch up just a little bit, but at an apoapsis of 250 kilometers, we cut off our engine. We start doing our spin, which was probably once again not correct, and we will be igniting our engine right now, and I did it a, a little bit too late. I was still spinning while igniting our engine, so we, we almost tumbled out of control, but I managed to keep it under control, luckily, and this will be the final time that we will fire our engines. You can see our periapsis raising and raising, and there we go. We have reached a stable orbit, we have deployed our payload, and we have reached a stable orbit in the real solar system with realism overhaul. This was very challenging, like my respect for all of those RSS players has gone up massively, uh, even more for NASA. I was very happy at the end, and I had a lot of fun recording this video. And there we go, we have extended our solar panels, isn't that just beautiful? So yeah, that was the video, we have successfully reached orbit in Realism Overhaul and the real solar system. I want to continue this series and maybe eventually land on Mars or something, so if you want to see more of this, please leave a like on the video. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe with post notifications on so you never miss a video, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!